In this video, I'm going to crack open some contrast paints and show you guys a quick and easy paint scheme for the Rohan Royal Guard. Welcome to Zorba Zorba Gaming, my name's Locke on Linton Keen and welcome to the latest instalment of the Middle Earth Painting Tutorials. Today we're going to have a look at my all-time favourite series of models from the Middle Earth range, the Rohan Royal Guard. They are some gorgeous sculpts from the early 2000s with a metal rider and a plastic Rohan horse and the metal rider has so much stunning detail in it. There's kind of lots of gorgeous gold ornate detailing on the leather armour, there's beautiful chain mail and lots of delicious Rohan kind of imagery and heraldry as well. They're absolutely Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's only four sculpts available, technically only three currently available, uh, but I recently did a Rohan Royal Guard conversion guide, which I'll link down in the description uh, to kind of show you guys how you can get a lot more variety out of those four poses and get yourself a really nice army. I'm currently running 15 or 16 of these guys, depending on my list, which is amazing to see them kind of back in the competitive meta with the new addition, Thade, and giving them a great buff to give them fight five on the charge. So they're gorgeous models, and we get to see them on the table a whole lot more. Now what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you guys a really nice, quick and easy painting tutorial for these guys that looks amazing, but isn't too hard to do. We're going to crack open a whole bunch of the New Games Workshop contrast paints, which are pretty awesome. I've experimented with them a little bit, and they're just a really great tool that we can add to our arsenal. We're going to use some classic techniques as well. We've got some shades and some normal games workshop primes and layer paints as well as a little bit of Vallejo but nothing too crazy uh, and it's going to be yeah a really nice effect that's not too difficult and really easy for you guys to achieve at home. As always I'm going to link all of the paints down in the description as well as conversion guides so that you can swap those paint colours to whatever brands you're using. Now of course the first thing we want to do whenever we're setting about painting a model is kind of have a look at the model and break down the model into some constituents painting zones uh, that will allow us to develop a bit of a palette for each of those zones so we've got a plan of attack before we paint the model. So I broke down the Royal Guard into nine different zones and they are the horse flesh, the horse hair, the leather armor and leather strapping, the horse hooves, the steel armor, the gold detail, the red fabric, the green fabric, and the skin tone. Now I've developed a color palette for each of those regions or zones just so that we know where we're going and I'll take you through those as we get to each little zone throughout the tutorial. But the first thing of course we need to do is make a pretty important choice and that's how we prime our model. Now I always like to do an aerosol prime pretty much all the time but especially with metal models because you want something that binds really strongly to the metal to prevent from chipping but the other thing that's really important is because we're using contrast paints we have to use one of the contrast primers now there's two different primers for contrast paints we have the wraith bone which is sort of a kind of white warm bony color or the gray sear which is just sort of like a, a kind of flatter gray it's a bit cooler and basically depending on which uh, primer you use the contrast paints behave slightly differently a, a kind of general rule of thumb is that usually things are a bit brighter over the bone whereas they're a bit more muted and darker over the uh, the grey. So what I've done is I've chosen the wraith bone because I want some really nice bright greens and bright horse flesh and, and bright reds. Uh, so we've gone for the wraith bone and I've given them all a big prime. So without further ado, let's jump in to getting some gorgeous paint on our Rohan Royal Guard. So make sure your prime with the wraith bone is nice and even. It can be a bit tricky to get up underneath that horse and in between the grooves between rider and mount. So make sure you stick it on a spraying stick, something that gives you a lot of accessibility to getting that prime in all over the model. The first paint that we're going to use is the Citadel Contrast Snake Bite Leather. With all of these contrasts, make sure you give them a bit of a nice shake. So a general guide for applying these contrast paints is to make sure that you get it all done relatively quickly so that you don't have different areas of the model drying at different rates. So with big areas like these horse flesh sections, you want to make sure that you kind of get it on nice and fast. And the one thing that you really want to look out for is leaving too much pooling in your recesses. Anytime there's a bit too much concentration of pigment, just move it around and spread it over some other areas. And then once all of the paint is down, don't mess about with it too much. Just let it dry, let the contrast agents do their thing, and you'll get that beautiful separation of pigment, leaving the pools in the recesses, and then you'll get the nice highlights coming through from the prime underneath to give you a lovely graduation of tone. Now the next paint that we're going to be using is the Citadel Color Contrast Skeleton Horde. This is a bit more of a bone kind of application, and we're going to be using this on all of the horse hair. So obviously we've got the horse's tail and the horse's mane itself, uh, and then of course there's a little bit of horse hair on the rider's helmet as well. Now this is probably one of my favorite contrast paints. It just goes down absolutely gorgeously. It's a nice kind of lightened tone and as it kind of cooks off through its contrast drying process you get some gorgeous kind of recessed details and it leaves a lovely 
bone over the top of the wraith bone, uh, which just looks absolutely stunning. So apply that to all of the horsehair, and then all of your horsehair work is going to be done. Now already our horse is looking fantastic, but we've got one last little detail just to really bring him to life, and that's to just grab some plain Abaddon black and pick out all of the horse hooves, uh, just to make sure that they have a nice little bit of hoofy life to them. Now you could also use the Black Templar Contrast Black, uh, which would give you just a slight different graduation in tone, but I've only got the Abaddon black on me, so I'm just going to go for a nice easy flat black. When you're picking out these hooves, make sure you use a nice small detail brush and just take your time because you don't want to spill any black on the horse flesh areas that you've already painted because you effectively have to reprime that area and then recontrast it. You won't be able to contrast over the top of the black. So with our horse finished, it's time to start working on our rider, and we're going to be focusing on all the big kind of contrast layer areas first, starting off with our Dark Angels Green to hit all of the green fabric. Now I love Dark Angels Green, uh, the kind of traditional colour from the early Citadel range was a gorgeous colour, and they've really brought back the flair of that old school base coat uh, in this new contrast paint, and it's absolutely fantastic. It requires a little bit more work than some of the colours like Skeleton Horde. You've got to make sure that you spread it nice and even over the green fabric and really watch for over pooling because if it gets too concentrated you lose a lot of the green and it almost goes to black so make sure that with all of the different folds of the fabric you really massage the paint so it's a nice broad even coverage uh, and then once it's all there just let it do its thing and it will look an absolute treat once you're done with the cloak, do the exact same thing on the shield, once again making sure you don't get too much pooling because there's a lot of kind of flat area with that green royal guard shield, you don't want any kind of dark splotches that don't make any contextual sense. With our green fabric finished and looking rather swish, we're onto our red fabric. Now we're going to be using the contrast paint Flesh Terrors Red, but I'm also going to dilute that down a little bit with the contrast medium. Now it's important that we use the contrast medium here rather than the normal Lamian medium, uh, because we want to make sure we're mixing the right agents together so the contrast paint still behaves. For those of you who aren't familiar with a medium, essentially it's just a pot of paint without any pigment in it. So instead of diluting it with water, you're actually diluting the paint with essentially more paint and you're changing the properties of that paint without affecting the pigment because you've still got all the glue and binding agents that a paint would have in that medium. So do about 50-50 of the Flesh Terrace Red and the Contrast Medium. Mix that all together on your wet palette uh, and then you can start to get cracking on all of the lovely red fabric. Now there's a little bit in different spots here on the Royal Guard. We've got kind of the legs and the pants and all of the kind of arm fabric that goes underneath all the, la uh, the leather detailing. So make sure that when you're picking that out you try not to get any of those leather the straps because we want to keep that prime there for when we go over to do our leather work later. So once again, use a nice small brush and apply nice and gently to all of those red fabric areas. Now the reason that I actually dilute it is because the flesh tear is red is probably a little bit too dark for my liking. I like my red fabrics to be nice and vibrant, so by diluting it you're allowing a little bit more of that bone prime to come through and then you get a nice brighter red. If you like a darker kind of red colour, dilute it a little less or even just use it straight out out of the pot, experiment for yourself and see what you prefer. So with our fabrics down, we're onto our next biggest layer, which is of course all of our leather work. Now I'm just going to be switching back to a normal kind of acrylic paint, not using contrast for this section, and I'm going to be using the charred brown from Vallejo's Game Color, which is exactly the same or pretty much as the Rhinox Hide from the Games Workshop Citadel range. Uh, and we're going to be grabbing a small brush with a bit of fine detail work, uh, throw some of this down on our wet palette, and we're going to go through and pick all of our leather detailing. So we've got saddles, we've got straps, we've got kind of... Uh, leather work on the model as well, you know, all the kind of strapping as part of the arm greaves, the greaves themselves have a leather core, and of course our spear shaft as well. So there's a lot of leather work to focus on here. Uh, the back of the shield as well, there's wooden panelling you can see a little bit. So just work your way through, focusing on smaller parts of the model, you know, check all of the leg, get all that leather work, move to the torso, check all of that section, and that way you won't miss anything later. 
So with the bulk of our colours down, it's time to get into our fine detailing. We're going to start with our metallics. I can't believe we're up to this stage already. These contrast paints are certainly making this a quick job. So the first one is our lead belcher, which is our silver base. And we're going to apply that to all of the steel armour. Uh, also, obviously, our scale mail. Uh, there's a little bit of chain mail coming off the royal guard neck. And we've also got our weapons as well. So our, the head of our spear or our swords, if you're using a royal guard with a sword pose. And make sure you get a nice, even coat of that lead belcher all all over those metal components. Don't forget there's a few fine details on the horse as well. There's the stirrups, there's also a couple of metal buckles and kind of rivets on the different bits of leatherwork around the bridle and around the kind of horse armor on the uh, on the ridge of the horse's face as well. So make sure you get all of those beautiful little details because those little glimmers of silver amongst all of the leather tones really help to add that extra layer of detail. When you're applying the lead belcher to the Rohan Royal Guard helmet, you can effectively just put it all over the helmet because we're going to be hiling that with a normal Citadel metallic gold colour, so you don't have to worry about avoiding those particular uh, bands where the gold will be, because we'll be able to highlight that up with gold over the top of the silver, no problem at all. Speaking of gold detailing, our next layer is going to be the Citadel base colour Retributor Armour to put down the base coat for all of our gold work. Now this is a gorgeous paint, make sure you thin it out a little bit on your wet palette just using the brush to pull it so you get a nice flat even coat and there's a lot of gold work here to do. Uh, obviously we've got some really lovely gold work on all of the uh, leather armour, the braces on the arms uh, and all of the kind of trimmings along the scale mail, so what you want to do here is just just kind of give yourself your reference photos, gather up where exactly you want to kind of put your gold and make sure you check off all of your details. I like to start with all of the uh, leather armor on the legs and the forearms because uh, it's got such lovely horse head work uh, and it's just a really kind of gorgeous collection of gold details. You want to use a nice fine detail brush, make sure the paint isn't too loaded and just gently drag over the highest points of the model. Uh, then I move on to the shield, pick out all of the lovely shield details, make sure you get the little bits of gold that wrap around onto the back of the shield as well and then there's a little bit of gold detailing that we talked about earlier on the helmet and a little bit around the top of the chest plate uh, which just goes along the edge around the silver paneling. Now that our metallic base coats are down, we're going to make them really pop by starting to get into our shading. So we're going to throw down some Nuln Oil over all of the silver components, and you can also put a little bit of Nuln Oil on any of the leather components that don't have gold on them. So any leather straps, you can throw down a little bit of Nuln Oil just to give them a little bit of shading as well, and that'll bring all of these leather and steel sections to life by putting a nice recessed detail with the shade and making all that gorgeous silver work really pop. Our second shade is of course the Citadel Classic Agrax Earth Shade, and that's going to go down all of our gold layers, including the kind of leather sections that are gold highlighted, uh, and that'll make sure the gold has a really nice kind of beautiful rich tone that's got full of vibrancy as those highlights pop up, but a little bit of nice recessed detail as well, and it just tones the shining gold back beautifully and gives it a lot of depth. It just makes this gold look absolutely fantastic. When you're doing the helmet, make sure you're kind of careful that not too much of the the Agrax Earthshade spills on over to the silver sections, otherwise you'll start to pollute the nice shading work you did with your Null Oil, but aside from that, just throw this down anywhere there's gold and it will look an absolute treat. Well, we're getting to the finer details now. We're jumping into our flesh tone, and we get to do a kind of a bit of an easier flesh process than normal. Because we've already got our bone primed down, we can go straight into using the Kislev flesh layer paint. Usually I put down some dark flesh tone first, or the Cadian flesh tone in Games Workshop as a base coat, but we don't need to do that here, because the layer just goes straight on top of the contrast primer really nicely, and gives us a lovely kind of base tone to work from. So down with our Kislev flesh all over the head, 
hands. You can see a little bit of the second hand underneath the shield, and then there's just a little bit of face work to do around the chin and just underneath the arm guard, and if you can, get a very tiny little bit in the eyes. Then we want to work on our highlights, so I'm just going to mix uh, a bit of 50-50% Kislev Flesh and Bleach Bone, or Bone White, which I'm using from the Vallejo Game Color range, just to give ourselves that natural highlight, go back with a really fine detail brush and pick out all of the raised sections of those flesh tones. So we're talking the knuckles, the very tops of the fingers, just a little bit of the cheeks uh, uh, underneath the helmet there, a little bit of the chin, just to begin to build that little bit of contrast uh, and give those nice higher details to the flesh tone. Now it's time for the third and final shade, which is of course our Reichlin Flesh Shade. You want to make sure that all of your flesh areas are really dry before you put this shade down, otherwise you'll wash away all of those details and it will just turn into a bit of a soup. Uh, so nice dry layers, and then we get our Reichlin Flesh Shade and just smother that all over the flesh tones, and you can really kind of see it work and get into the recesses and tone the base layer and the highlight together. And there you go, three steps, and you've got some pretty great looking skin tone. Make sure you drop a little bit into the eyes as well to kind of give the details in behind the mask. So now the flesh tones are done, we can give our little Rohirrim man a bit of a beard. I've gone for a bit of a, uh, a blonde kind of beard, because I usually do brown hair for my guys, and we know the straw heads are a little bit of a, uh, a blonde collection, so I've got myself some sunburst yellow uh, from the Games Workshop color range, and I've just tapered that off a little bit by mixing it with some bone white or bleach bone, just so it's not so kind of ridiculous and bright and yellow, because blonde hair isn't really super golden, and just apply that over the edge of the beard, and then once that's finished, uh, let it dry fully, and then come back with a little bit more Agrax Earthshade and you can just tone that beard back. It kind of gives it some nice recessed detail and also knocks back a little bit of the vibrancy to make it a little bit more of a natural fibre like blonde hair. So the final step is just to grab a little bit of charred brown or rhinox hide and cover that all over the base so that we get rid of the nice bright prime from the contrast primer and that's going to make your basing look a whole lot better because you won't have any bright spots bleeding through. And that is our Rohan Royal Guard fully painted and doesn't he just look fantastic? So with the final layer of paint down on the model, there's just a couple of quick steps to finish him. The first thing you want to do is grab yourself some varnish. Any spray varnish is fine. I use the uh, Citadel Munitorum varnish, which is their new varnish that recently replaced the Purity Seal. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good varnish. All varnishes are fine. You basically just need to make sure that it's a matte varnish, so you're not applying any gloss to the model. And you want to make sure you spray it in the correct way. So uh, you're looking for nice slow passes, kind of 20 centimeters away from the model, kind of rotating gently and just taking your time it might take a couple of coats to make sure you get the model fully covered, but also the important consideration is temperature and weather. You don't want it to be too cold, and you don't want there to be too much humidity in the air. So usually try and do it in the middle of the day, around 12. A nice sunny, dry day is really good, which could be difficult to find here in Queensland. Uh, but uh, it's you, basically, if you have too much moisture in the air, it frosts things, and you get this kind of weird discoloration or frosting of the varnish, particularly on metallic paints. And Games Workshop metallics are absolutely gorgeous, but if the conditions aren't right, they do frost very easily. I've had it where I've sprayed some Royal Guard with varnish when it's at like 3am the night before a tournament, and all of the gold has turned like dark brown, and I've had to like repaint all the gold, you know? So make sure you pick the right conditions and your varnishing will be fine. Doesn't matter what brand you use. Um, I've just got the Munitorum varnish here because I wanted to try out the New Games Workshop spray, but the Tamiya Flat Clear or all the other varnishes that are out there are absolutely fine. Just make sure you pick a flat varnish and you pick the right weather conditions. And then I just did a quick little basing job, uh, which was just to apply some static grass tufts. I used some 10mm wild meadow and patchy tufts, and then a combination of 2mm uh, dead grass and spring grass, all available from zorpazorp.com down in the description. We've got a great range of basing materials there. Uh, and I also used a little bit of arid earth ready basing as well, just for a little bit of gravel. And that's all to kind of tie in with my Palinor Fields display board. So I'm going to do a bit of a more in-depth showcase 
on basing later on once that display board comes together. But I am absolutely ecstatic with how the, uh, the the models come together. These contrast paints are really useful. There are some that I think are better than others. I think the Skeleton Horde is absolutely stunning and just works really well straight out of the bat. You've got to do a little bit more with the uh, snake bite leather, um, but it's it's pretty good. Same with the Dark Angels Green, uh, which just on a side note is wigging me out because all of these names are like the old paint names that I'm used to from like the old Citadel range, but they've stolen some of the old classic names to use for the uh, contrast paints, which is nice because Dark Angels Green was a gorgeous colour, so it's nice to see that name doing well again. Um, but yeah, the contrast paints are pretty awesome, basically, is my takeaway. You've got to kind of get used to using them and they're not amazing at everything, but they're just another tool for the toolbox that works exceptionally well and they've enabled us to paint these models really quickly, which is of course their whole sales pitch. I hate painting horse flesh, it's the worst fucking thing in the world, and just slapping that stuff on looks absolutely fine for tabletop quality. So yeah, super exciting stuff, takes me one step instead of like five to get the flesh because I normally try and do all these layers and stuff and it never looks any good anyway. So uh, super excited to have a whole mounted army of Khan and Rohan down the track uh, that are going to get covered with contrast paints, particularly for their horses. So thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little painting guide. I've got a whole lot more planned, we've got lots of scouring of the Shire stuff about to come out, so we're going to do a painting guides for all of that, but if there's any models that you guys would like to see in particular, drop a comment down below and let me know, uh, and I'll try and slot it in, make sure that we get some really cool community engagement going, and get the stuff that you guys want help with painting, uh, and uh, make sure you check out all the other painting guides and all the other stuff we've got on the channel. Thank you so much for watching, we'll see you next time here at Zorba Zorb Gaming. Cheers guys.